Newton's First Law of Motion Newton's first law of motion states that an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by an unbalanced force. The opposite also applies to this law, saying that an object at rest, or standing still, will stay at rest unless acted on by an unbalanced force. What has to happen for something to move? Some force, such as a push or a pull, can force an object to move. Returning to the definition of this law, it states that an object will remain moving or not moving unless acted on by an unbalanced force. What is an unbalanced force? Think about this. When you are standing still, your body is balanced. There is gravity keeping you on the ground, and there is the ground pushing you up. And if you are not moving, there are equal forces in both the left and right directions, or in front of you and behind you, which keeps you where you are. So what if someone pushes you? Are you balanced anymore? No. A force such as a push would cause one force to be stronger than the opposite force and make you move. Some examples you can think of include a scale, or you might call it a balance. If the scale is equal on both sides, is it balanced or unbalanced? Take a moment to think about this. It is balanced because there are equal forces on both sides. Now, what happens if an object is dropped on one side of the scale? Is the scale balanced or unbalanced? Take another moment to think about this. It is unbalanced because the force of the object moving down onto the scale was stronger than the forces pushing up on the scale, which caused the scale to move down. Now that you know a little bit about balance and unbalanced forces in Newton's first law of motion, let's see it in action using cadence of figure skater. In this video, cadence is gliding, and here I'll show you that now. Cadence is gliding with balanced forces. The ice is pushing her up, gravity is pushing her down, and there are no forces to her left or to her right. So these are equal. So right now, cadence is balanced. Now, hypothetically, if she's balanced, she could continue to glide forever. However, there are other factors that will slow cadence down. The most important being friction. Friction is the force between two objects in contact that opposes the motion of either object. There is friction between cadence's blades and the ice. So imagine those rubbing against each other. The ice and her blades rub against each other, which will eventually slow her down. Another force is air resistance, which is a form of friction. Have you ever been walking and a big gust of wind is blowing towards you? Is it easier to walk forward or more difficult? It should be more difficult because you have to push against the forces of the wind or air in order to continue moving forward. In an ice rink, there's typically no air resistance, so Cadence only has to worry about slowing down because of the friction between her blades and the ice. Now, in this video, we have Cadence gliding into a wall. Let's think back to the definition of Newton's first law of motion. An object, or in this case a person in motion, will remain in motion unless acted on by an unbalanced force. Watch the video and see if you can find where Cadence is balanced and where she is unbalanced. Now remember we did this as a little bit of a review earlier. Let's see if you can remember. If we rewind, 
we can see that her original gliding is balanced. So she is balanced right here. But when she bumps into the wall, here, she stops. Why did this happen? Take a moment to think about this. She stopped because the force of the wall was stronger than the forces that were moving her forward. So as she was moving forward, the force of the wall was stronger than the forces pushing her forward. So thinking of our balanced and unbalanced forces again, Cadence was balanced gliding into the wall, but then unbalanced once she had to, or once she stopped as she bumped into the wall. Newton's second law. First, I will have you watch the video, and then we will discuss it. As you can see in this video, we have one skater pulling the other using a rope. Remember from Newton's first law that a force must be applied for an object to move. In this case, Courtney is pulling cadence, which is causing cadence to move. Courtney is applying a force to make cadence move. Now watch as cadence slows down the acceleration caused by Courtney's pull. What is she doing? She's stopping. You can see, if you continue watching, how Courtney has to work harder to pull cadence the same amount. Newton's second law states that force equals mass times acceleration. This means that the more mass an object has, the more force is needed to move that object. So connecting back to this video, Courtney was pulling cadence at a constant velocity. But once cadence applied a force of friction right there where she was stopping, Courtney had to work harder to accelerate. As you can see, she's laboring right here. Another example would be when you go grocery shopping. Is it easier to push an empty shopping cart or a full one? Think again to what Newton's second law states. Force equals mass times acceleration. The full cart has a larger mass than the empty cart, and so it will take more force to accelerate the cart than it, the full cart than it will to accelerate the empty cart the same amount. Our final law of motion, Newton's third law, states that for every action force there is an equal and opposite reaction force. Basically this means that forces always occur in pairs. We can see this demonstrated by Courtney and Cadence on the ice. As you can see right here, Courtney and Cadence are balanced, but watch as they push against each other. What do you think will happen? Take a moment and think about this. Cadence is going to push on push forward on Courtney and Courtney is going to go push forward on Cadence. What just happened? We saw in the video that Cadence and Courtney pushed forward against each other but they ended up moving in what direction? 
backwards. How does this relate to this third law of motion? Let's remember what the definition for our third law of motion is again. It states that for every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. So we can see that as the two skaters pushed toward each other, the forces pushing toward each other pushed them in the opposite direction equally. I will show this video one more time in slow motion so you can see. There is the push and there is the glide back. Notice how they pushed equally and they glided backwards equally. You could also think of this in other sports, such as basketball. When you dribble a basketball, you are pushing down on the basketball, but then the basketball bounces and pushes back up onto your hand. So you forced it down, but it pushed back up. So there's an equal but opposite force being applied there. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned all about Newton's three laws of motion. Now go get moving.